hydraulic, tire, LSM, LIM, compressed air, weight drop, and more. There are all sorts of ways to launch your roller coaster. The only problem though is that these systems have a lot of moving parts and are much more complicated than regular coasters, leading to some parks avoiding them. This doesn't mean that all parks aren't willing to take the risk with some even having multiple launch coasters. That means that today I will be counting down the top 10 parks for launch coaster lovers. Before we get started though, I should mention that I am taking into account new for 2021 coasters, so some parks that may not be the best for launch coasters at this second may show up because of how their future is looking. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video where I give my predictions on where Six Flags new for 2021 launch coasters are going. Kicking off the list is Energylandia, a park that may just be middle of the road right now, but their launch coaster collection is about to become top tier. That's because in 2021, they will be opening the much anticipated Abyssus. Abyssus is a Vekoma Shockwave, one of their newer coaster models, and has basically everything that you could want in a coaster. At least it looks like it from the renderings. We'll just have to wait for people to get on it and see if it lives up to the hype. Erion. I'm sorry, that was bad. Like, really bad. Moving on, they also have another new Age of Vekoma though, and that is Formula. Formula, I believe that even though it's at one of the most well-known parks, it's still one of the most slept on coasters in Europe. I think that people just get so caught up in Hyperion Zadra and not the same park but the neighboring Lek coaster that they forget how good Formula is. It may not have the stats but it has some of the snappiest corkscrews out there and has that rewritability factor too. Man, Energy Landy is really pushing for that top spot in the European park battle. Next in the number 9 spot is Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Discovery Kingdom is one of those rare parks that has three launch coasters and as it's a park in California, I'm surprised that this is rarely talked about. First, there's Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster, and yes, I am counting this mainly because RCDB lists it as a tire propelled launch coaster. Harley doesn't have the best reputation because despite being only 2 years old and utilizing RMC track, it sure ain't the smoothest thing in the world. Plus, these sorts of rides just tend to get a little bit repetitive and aren't really something that you want to keep lapping, especially when you have rides like Joker and Superman Ultimate Flight. Hey, that's a launch coaster too! Superman Ultimate Flight may be a clone, but it's one of the best sky arcades out there because of those lap bars. Man, those things would allow for some crazy hang time. Plus, I mean, I guess the GP won't really know that it's a clone. But then, in addition to those two, you have yet another launch coaster, and this one used to be a clone, but now I guess it really isn't? Blast Vertical Velocity is a demented, intimate impulse that also delivers some awesome hang time on the twisted inline rollback, as they're calling it. I still can't believe that they thought lying about the height would work, but hey, they did get under regulations eventually, gotta respect the dedication. And number 8 is Fantasialand. This is a case where I think that they were pretty good before, but their new addition will bring them to a whole nother level. That coaster is Fly, the world's first ever launched flying coaster, and it's also stayed to be the world's longest flying coaster. The ride that holds the record now is Flying Dinosaur at Universal Japan at around 3,700 feet or 1,100 meters, if you're wondering. No one knows exactly when Fly will open as the actual ride is done, but just not the extensive theming. But who knows, this launch flying coaster concept could become something big. But in addition to that, they have a legendary Tehran, a masterpiece to both look at and ride. Tehran uses, or Tehran, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, uses snappy launches and even snappier low to the ground turns to complete its course. And there's no wonder it has the reputation it has. Everything about the ride is fantastic. Their quantity may not be the highest, but the quality is really what brings Fantasialand onto the list. Next on the list is Dollywood, home to maybe the best launch roller coaster on earth in my opinion. Lightning Ride is the world's only launched wooden roller coaster and we all know about this ride. Insane airtime, beautiful setting, some of the best pacing on earth. But something that us coaster enthusiasts don't always realize is that not everyone can handle something as crazy as a lightning rod. And for that reason, Dollywood has a launch coaster that everyone can enjoy in Fire Chaser Express. Traveling just 34.5 miles an hour, it doesn't have amazing stats, but you have to remember that that's not what the ride is about. It's just supposed to be a fun themed experience that little kids can enjoy, and every major park should have something like this. Now for number 6, we are moving over to Japan for Fujiku Highland. First up, we have Takabisha. Now the casual enthusiasts might hear that and be confused because they know that Takabisha holds, or actually held the record for world's deepest drop, so it probably isn't a launch coaster, but what's crazy is how much they fit in that 3,280 feet of track. To start out, you go through an enclosed heartline roll before launching from 5 to 62.1 miles an hour in just 2 seconds. I can't say for sure because I haven't ridden it, but this just looks powerful on camera. It comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're just thrown into the main portion of the ride. This enclosed section is probably why I think Takabisha looks better than TMNT Shell Razor, but what's crazy is that it isn't even the best launch in the park. 
In that same park, you have the quickest accelerating coaster in the world, and it's not even close at all, Dota Dampa. 0 to 111.8 miles per hour in only 1.56 seconds. I was watching Canby Coaster video, and he, a great channel by the way, check him out, but he described Dota Dampa in a perfect way. He said, I stayed my stomach dropped on launch, but it felt more like I left my body behind in that launch tunnel, end quote. Let me just put this into perspective. Dodampa uses some of the same technology used to launch rockets in outer space. Enough said. But despite being easily the most insane launch on Earth, that doesn't mean that there aren't quick launches on other coasters, and one of those is at the park in the number 5 spot, Knott's Berry Farm. Knott's is home to the second quickest accelerating coaster in America, the aptly named Accelerator. One of the most notable things about this launch is how free the rider feels. You're secured in by just a little T-bar, and I'm sure that's enough to intimidate even some of the most hardcore enthusiasts. But like I mentioned before with Dollywood, not everyone can handle those extreme launch coasters, so they also have Pony Express, a Vekoma motorbike style coaster. Something that I find kind of interesting is that despite being built in 2008, Pony uses the archaic flywheel launch system that's found on some of the remaining Schwarzkopf shell loops, but I guess it works for what they were going for. But I'm thinking that maybe they went for the flywheel launch system because they have experience, as Knott's Berry Farm is also home to Montezuma's Revenge, an intense Schwarzkopf shell loop that was the tallest coaster in the world when it opened back in 1978. Man, the variety is there for Knott's. They have a historic launch coaster, a family launch coaster, and an extreme launch coaster. Pretty good. The next park down, Six Flags Magic Mountain has the same number of launch coasters with three, but I think that they're just of slightly higher quality. Let's start off with the newest coaster in the park, West Coast Racers. If you've ever been tired of waiting in a long line for a short ride, then West Coast Racers is the perfect ride for you, as this baby packs in 4,000 feet of track. Now that's less than half the longest coaster in the world, but you have to remember that this ride hits a top speed of 55 miles an hour, so it's not exactly speeding through that course. That relatively low top speed allows the ride to be accessible for families who should be more important to parks than roller coaster enthusiasts. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. But they do have great rides for enthusiasts too, as in the same park as Full Throttle. Full Throttle is a great coaster for any lineup as it packs a hang time on the world's tallest loop and just has a very unique layout. Also, something that I noticed I don't think I've heard anyone bring up, Full Throttle is a model from Premier Nen the Skyrocket 3. That makes me think that this model is meant to be cloned, but it obviously hasn't been very successful as no others have been built. But then that's not all, you had the first coaster to ever hit 400 feet, not really, so your man escaped from Krypton. I know it takes 7 seconds to get there, but come on, it still is a 100 mile per hour launch, so I am 100% not complaining. Also, I was surprised to learn that this ride hits 4.5 Gs on the incline into the vertical spike, but I guess that makes sense when you think about it. And now kicking off the top 3 is the one and only Cedar Point. As the park with the best, most balanced coaster lineup in the world, of course they're going to have to make this list. First off, they have Wicked Twister. In my opinion, it's really just an okay ride. The launch is quite powerful, but it gets a little bit repetitive. But something that really surprises me is the scale of this thing. It has the stats. 215 feet tall. It's taller than Steel Vengeance, but I guess that shows that stats don't matter a whole lot. Then you have the second tallest roller coaster in the world, Top Thrill Dragster. I think we all know about Dragster, one of the greatest launches on Earth, 0 to 120 miles per hour in 4 seconds. The atmosphere might actually be the best part of it. You have the stoplight telling you when you're gonna go, you have the sound effects, the dude telling you to put your arms down, and everyone waiting for that launch. The feeling of waiting for that launch is indescribable. Also, this isn't about the launch, but I can't believe that this ride's drop isn't talked about when usually when people speak of the best drops. It's literally a 400 foot, 90 degree drop with just a little T-bar holding you in. But then you have yet another top tier launch coaster, Maverick, the 2007 Intamin Blitz coaster that features two launches. I can't decide which launch I prefer because the first one gives you that boost that gives you some crazy ejector on the top, but the second is a 70 mile per hour launch out of a tunnel. Well actually I guess I really don't have to choose which one's better, I can just like both of them. Next up on the list sitting in the number 2 spot is Universal Orlando Resort, and yes I know it's technically two separate parks, but I'm just going to pair them together for this video. Also, I never really thought about this, but each of the Orlando parks kind of specialize in different sorts of rides. Disney has mine trains, SeaWorld has big B&Ms, the Fun Spot parks have Woody's, and Universal has launch coasters. First is Revenge of the Mummy, an indoor premier rides coaster that features three LIM launches. And like many other aspects of the ride, I think that the launches really take some people off guard. Then moving across to Islands of Adventure, we have Incredible Hulk, one of only two B&M launch coasters out there. Something that's really impressive is just how intense the launch feels, despite being a tire-propelled one. But it's probably helped by the absolutely insane 0G roll that follows. 
Also, I've told this story before, but back when I was a GP, I went to Islands of Adventure, and I had not seen the ride run yet, so I was quite taken aback when the ride just suddenly propelled into the abyss out of nowhere. But in addition to that, they also have a launch coaster that both Harry Potter fans and younger kids alike will love in Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. The fact that this exists is just unimaginable. It might be the most themed roller coaster on earth, and the price tag definitely agrees. $300 million! That's almost as much as the entire budget for Avengers Infinity War, but somehow those three won't even be the extent of their launch coaster collection come next year. They are receiving what I think could honestly be a top 5 roller coaster in the world, Velocicoaster. From the renderings, it looks to do basically everything you could ever want in a coaster amazingly. All those parks may be good, but it's doubtful that anyone's launch coaster collection will ever match that at Ferrari World Abu Dhabi. The park is themed for Ferrari, so I guess it only makes sense for them to specialize in launch coasters. In fact, 4 out of their 5 major coasters feature launches. The only one that doesn't is Flying Aces in case you're wondering. They of course have the coaster that holds the record for world's fastest coaster, Formula Rasa at 149 miles per hour. Everyone knows it for that record, but yeah, I still cannot believe how underrated it seems from the POVs. There looks to be some insanely intense turns there, and the stats back that up as it hits 4.8 Gs. Plus, there's 6 speed hills on this thing. 6! Safe to say that you get immense amounts of airtime. But of course, they have to balance Formula Rasa out, which is why they have another launch coaster, Fiorano GT Challenge. This is a pair of dueling quadruple launch more rides creations, but the launches are relatively drawn out, and so are the elements, allowing for it to be a great ride for kids. Something that we really have no idea who it will be good for though because it hasn't opened yet is Mission Ferrari. So far all we really know is that it's a highly themed quintuple launch SFX coaster with corkscrew. The fact that the park has been able to hide so much information through all 6 years of construction, yes 6 is pretty insane. Also Theme Park Horizons made a fantastic video on Mission Ferrari so if you want to know more about it I highly suggest watching that after this video. But somehow, those three aren't even the extent of Ferrari World's launch coaster collection. They have Turbo Track. Opening in 2017, this is the newest Intamin Reverse Freefall coaster, the same model as Superman Escape from Krypton that we talked about earlier. Granted, it doesn't have the same stats, but it's still 210 feet tall and takes up a tiny footprint, so it's definitely a good investment for this amazing park. So that will wrap up the main portion of the video, and since you've gone this far, I'm going to give you my predictions for the 2021 Six Flags launch coasters. So just some background info, it is rumored that Six Flags will be adding an RMC Raptor, SNS Coaster, and Premier Coaster in 2021, and we know that the Raptor is from Magic Mountain's 20th Coaster, we just don't know where the SNS and Premier Coasters will go. I believe that the Premier Coaster will go to Six Flags over Georgia as the headlining addition in their new revitalized Justice League area. I say this because the park is one of the better trade in the Six Flags chain and for good reason as it has no competition. But the park also does not have a launch coaster, it's a perfect fit. As for the SNS, I'm gonna sound crazy, but I think that will be going to Six Flags America and it will be themed to the Flash. The reason I say this is because of markings that can be found around the park, electrical permits that have been filed that seem to be for a launch coaster, and the new Six Flags CEO Michael Spanos actually went to the US Naval Academy which is near Annapolis, near Six Flags America, and used to go to Six Flags America all the time. He knows how much potential the park has, so there are my predictions. Anyway, that's about going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to leave your thoughts, suggestions, and video ideas in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.